thing about the grip is to place the two hands on the club in such position that they can work together. Practically all of the movements of the hands and wrists throughout the swing are contained in an action similar to that which would raise the club from the position of address over the right shoulder. In fact, a very good position at the top of the swing can be attained by making just two motions. The first, a simple turn of the body without moving the hands. The second, raising the arms with the hand and wrist action that I've described. In an actual swing, of course, these movements are blended into easy, leisurely motion. Here you can see that up to this point, the hands and wrists have had very little to do with the movement of the club head. But at the next stop, the wrists are fully cocked. This sort of swing would not be possible unless the hands were correctly placed upon the club. The left hand should be placed on top of the shaft. As I look down, I can see three knuckles. This places the left arm in a powerful position where it can swing through the ball. The left arm must be capable of communicating to the club the power generated in the midsection of the body. This it cannot do unless it is free to swing completely through. Here, even after the ball has left the face of the club, the left arm is still going, and you can still see the back of the hand. It is a very serious mistake to have the left hand too much under the shaft. For in this position, it is impossible to complete a proper backswing. It likewise, in hitting a ball, forces the left elbow into the side so that the player cannot possibly swing through. At the top of the swing, the toe of the club should be pointing toward the ground. Both hands should be under the shaft and the right elbow should be down. To make this possible, the right hand should be placed against the side of the shaft where it will not hinder the correct cocking of the wrist at the top of the swing and in such position that it can strike a sort of slapping blow like this without closing the face of the club too quickly. Contrary to the belief held by most average golfers, the right hand does not begin to climb or roll over the left until after the ball has been struck. Say, Bob, how about that business of uh, changing your right hand grip from there to there to correct a hook or a slice? Well, Vic, I think that's a very serious mistake. Of course, placing the right hand under the shaft favors a hook or tends to correct a slice, whichever way you choose to put it. But a golfer's sense of control is in his hands. He should learn the correct grip and stay with it. This is the one thing that he should never change after he gets it right. Many beginners are like Joe. They want to grip a golf club like a baseball bat entirely in the palms of both hands. To have any control then, they must squeeze hard and tighten up the muscles of the arms. Others who have heard that the club should be gripped by the fingers attempt to hold it in the fingers alone. The club should be gripped mainly by the fingers, but the shaft should lie obliquely across the hands. The fingers should twine around the shaft, allowing the additional spread to give greater power and facility of movement because of the increased leverage. I also prefer the overlapping grip because it affords a feeling of compactness which helps the two hands to work as one. But Bob, I don't use the overlapping grip as you do. Does that make any difference? Not in the least. I'm merely talking about the position of the hands on the club and it applies equally to the overlapping, interlocking or even the old-fashioned grip. 